Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Thaslin, here to talk to you about depression and low mood. Now, there seems to be this expectation that some folks have that we're supposed to be happy all the time, and that if we're not happy all the time, that's indicative of some sort of problem. The truth is that we all experience a wide range of emotions, including sadness, including anger, including despair, sometimes even hopelessness and worthlessness. All of our emotions, all of our thoughts are totally normal. They're meant to be part of the human experience. However, if we're noticing that we've been stuck in feeling sad or feeling hopeless or worthless for a prolonged period of time, that's usually indicative of something being not quite right. Now, major depressive disorder or depression as we know it is usually two weeks of feeling unmotivated, um, feeling low mood and not feeling like you're experiencing any interest or pleasure for most of the day, just about every day. But let's not talk about the clinical definition of depression. Let's just talk about the depression that many of us talk about day to day, right? That just not feeling good, um, perhaps feeling sad or uh, numb a lot of the time. This is the depression that many of us talk about. And it usually means that you know, we're feeling low mood. Um, so that might be sadness, it might be low energy, we might not be having any motivation to do even the things we usually enjoy doing. You might be not getting out of bed or forcing yourself to get out of bed to do the bare minimum, showing up because you have to, not because you want to. We might experience difficulties with concentration and with focus. We might experience difficulty sleeping, and this could be having trouble falling asleep, or even staying asleep. We might also notice that our eating patterns change. So we might be eating more than often, or we might be um, eating less often. We might be isolating, not connecting with the people that we usually want to connect with, or even the people we have to connect with. And when we do connect, we might be snappy, irritable, we might also experience even just an entire slowing down of the body. We might experience some indigestion. We might be having headaches or sore muscles. Whether or not these represent the clinical version of depression, when we're experiencing this for even a few days, it's usually a good sign that something's not right and it's time to do something about it. We can think about depression as a downward spiral. Right, so things are going well up here, and then all of a sudden, things just start to fall apart. And before we know it, we're doing less and less and less until we're barely doing anything at all. And that's at the bottom of that spiral. We're not talking to folks. We're maybe not showering or getting out of bed. We're just not ourselves anymore. So what can we do? We can start with something, anything. The moment we commit to starting to do something is usually when we start to break the pattern of that spiral and instead of continuing to go downward, we allow it to start coming back up. It's important to start small. Um, we know the saying of um, learning to crawl before you learn to walk, before you learn to run. So. When you're coming out of that spiral, don't run. Start with one thing a day. Perhaps something fun that you're more likely to do. People often think that when they're finally feeling like they're ready to do something, they commit to the dishes or to laundry. Maybe don't do that. Maybe listen to your favorite song. Maybe talk to someone if you're feeling up for it. Maybe pick up your guitar. We go for a walk. It doesn't need to be productive. Just do something, anything at all. 
you want to start in small steps because you want to make goals for yourself that are achievable. And so planning a whole day of getting those chores done that have built up over the past few days or weeks will probably make you feel overwhelmed. You probably won't feel super motivated to do it. And if you don't achieve the goal, you might feel discouraged and that might mean that tomorrow you're less likely to try again. So start with small steps. One thing a day, maybe two if you feel up for it. This is how we can work our way up the spiral. And as we start with those small steps, day after day, we might notice that we have more and more energy to do more and more and more and more until we're finally feeling like ourselves again. We can also try to have some self-compassion. Sometimes when we're feeling like we're not doing what we're supposed to be doing and we're not meeting expectations, we judge ourselves and we can be very, very harsh. But when we can recognize that something is getting in the way of us being the people we want to be, of doing things that we're meant to be doing, perhaps that can bring some space for some self-compassion. And instead of judging and criticizing, we can be kind to ourselves and remind ourselves that we're going through something right now and that we can take care of ourselves as opposed to punishing ourselves for what's going on. We can also try to practice the mindfulness. Now this can be hard, especially when um, our concentration and our focus aren't going so well. But instead of getting caught up in the negative thoughts and emotions, uh, like I can't do this or I'm a failure or no one will love me, maybe we can recognize that those are just thoughts. They don't represent the truth. And we can try to just observe those thoughts, experience the emotions without getting stuck or caught in them. We can also try to commit to being the kind of person we want to be. And so if we really value relationships, maybe we can continue to try to connect with people no matter how we connect with them. It does, and it doesn't need to be connecting with everyone every single day for hours. But maybe we can pick up the phone and send a message, even if we don't have the energy to read the response until a little while later. Or maybe we can go for a walk with someone and not say anything at all. Or if we value kindness, committing to continuing to be kind even when we're not feeling particularly kind towards ourselves, or even when we notice that we've been irritable or unkind, noticing that that's the pattern that's happening and recommitting to that kindness if that's something that's important to us is perfectly okay and is a step in our path to recovery. In terms of what we can do to prevent depression or low mood from happening. Some of the things include trying to have a healthy, balanced diet. And that doesn't mean eating healthy all of the time, but it means eating the food that feels good for your body and balancing, making sure you're getting the nutrients with making sure you're also enjoying the food that you eat. Those things can be the same thing, but sometimes they're not, and it's okay. We can also try to be physically active. And that doesn't mean necessarily exercising the way we think about it, but getting our body moving, um, ideally for several minutes every single day. Uh, 20 to 30 minutes is a great target, but do what your body can do. Try to get your heart going. You can have a dance party. You can go for a walk. You can um, play a game of indoor soccer if a, with a balloon if you're not allowed to kick the ball in the house or that might be too dangerous. Get your body going. Get your heart going. Move. Incorporating fun into our day-to-day. -day. And when we're busy and when we're stressed, it's so easy to forget to have fun. And it doesn't need to be this big, grand, fun activity. Anything can be fun. It might mean um, playing a card game before going to bed or listening to our favorite song. It might mean um, 
cooking with some good music on. It might mean going for a walk in a new area and exploring. Whatever it is that brings you enjoyment, incorporate that into your day-to-day routine. Connecting with people is so important. And this doesn't mean having to be social necessarily. We all have different ways of connecting with others. And so find the way that allows you to connect with people most meaningfully and do that thing. And so that might mean, um, you know, reaching out to a friend, having a meal with a friend. It might mean sending a message. It might mean writing a letter. Whatever it is, find those ways and connect because that connection can increase our mood and our energy level, but it can also remind us that we aren't alone and that we have people who care about us. We can also try to rest as much as possible. And that doesn't mean, of course, staying in bed all day, but sometimes it does mean sleeping in. It does mean taking a break. It does mean doing something that isn't productive and that isn't work. Giving your mind and your body an opportunity to rest allows us to replenish, but it also allows us to invest in ourselves and remember that we're allowed to take breaks, that we are worth the investment and we are worth the recharge. We can also develop a good sleep routine. And this means trying to go to sleep at a consistent time every single day including the weekend, and trying to wake up at a consistent time every day, including the weekend. This doesn't mean you have to, but it's a good habit to have. It also means monitoring our caffeine intake and trying to limit our caffeine intake, especially in the afternoon. Caffeine can stay inside our bodies and it can keep us awake and more energetic and more alert, which can make it hard to fall asleep at night sometimes. Sugar can do the same thing. Eating before bed can also do the same thing. And so trying to space out your last meal or snack before bedtime so that your body has some time to digest whatever you've eaten. Not looking at a screen. And this can be extremely hard for many of us. So try to give yourself at least 40 minutes of not looking at a screen before you go to bed. And so that might mean You know, you finish your last TV show, you turn the TV off, you set your alarm on your phone if that's something you need to do, and then you commit to not looking at your phone again. So many of us fall asleep with our phones in our hands or watching TV, and this isn't great sleep hygiene because the lights actually make our body feel like it's still daytime. If you do need help falling asleep, One thing you can try to do is to set a timer so that you might listen to um, a guided meditation or some uh, calm, soft music that will stop after half an hour or an hour so that you don't need to then pick up your phone and turn it off. You also don't want to fall asleep to anything for too long because that same thing, so whether it's, um, you know, a podcast or some music, that can actually interrupt your sleep. And so that's why the timer can be helpful. The more we take care of ourselves and the more we invest in ourselves, the less likely we are to get depressed. But that doesn't mean that we won't get depressed. When we talk about choosing to do something, when we're on our way up that spiral again, when we're on our way to recovery, this also doesn't mean that until that point we were being lazy or we were choosing to be sad. There can be a lot of stigma around depression that if people could just decide to fix it or decide to feel better or decide to get out of bed, that they wouldn't feel so bad. The reality is when we're feeling that way, we're quite stuck. It's as though something is actually getting in the way of us being able to take care of ourselves and to do our day-to-day responsibilities. So it's not that we're choosing to be sick, rather we are sick. And until we have enough energy to start doing something, we won't. And sometimes it's what our body needs. 
It's as though someone who has the flu is sick in bed and we told them, just get up and you'll start to feel better. At some point, yes, that starts to be the case, but first they need to rest and they need to recover before they can have the energy to do that. And so have compassion and have self-compassion. Remember that we're all doing the best that we can on any given day at any given moment and give yourself the opportunity to really connect, have self-compassion, invest in yourself and invest in your recovery. For more information, visit silmmentalhealth.com. Thank you.